I've got a number of people reaching out to me that have run into various issues while setting up their network adapters in VirtualBox while following my cybersecurity lab building series. So in this video, I'm going to show you the difference between the network adapter modes in VirtualBox and how we can easily apply them in different ways to successfully provide connectivity to our virtual machines. So let's get started. For those of you that found this video while going through my cybersecurity lab building series, welcome back. For everyone else that found this video, welcome to my channel. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get going with the tutorial. Let's look at the NAT network mode. This mode is enabled for all virtual network adapters by default. VirtualBox has a built-in NAT engine that includes the network address translation, NAT, and DHCP server functionality. For those of you that don't know what network address translation is, in the simplest terms, it's a way to map a private IP address inside a local area network to a public or outside IP address on another network or the internet. There are lots of different NAT types like static, dynamic, port address, translation, or PAT. However, for this tutorial, so that we don't venture out of scope, just to keep in mind that NAT maps a private inside IP address to a public outside IP address. When you select this network mode, VirtualBox set, sets up a virtual NAT device and it assigns it a default IP address of 10.0.2.2. .2. This is also the default gateway used by the VM. The virtual NAT device uses the physical network adapter built into your computer as its external or outside network and maps this to your internal virtual LAN network. The built-in DHCP server provides the virtual machine with an IP address. By default, it's 10.0.2. Dot one five slash twenty four. The VM is now set up and able to communicate with the external network, which is your physical LAN, including the internet. If we look at the table below, when you use NAP mode, the VMs will not be able to communicate with, with each other. These NAT networks are totally isolated. The VM will, however, be able to communicate with your physical host computer and other devices on the physical LAN. However, if your physical host computer or another device needs to access the VM, you'll need to set up port forwarding, which again is outside of the scope of this video. I'll show you how to make your VM accessible from the physical network using another network mode shortly. So to show you what this looks like in terms of a physical network, which you may be more familiar with, this would be like taking a physical router and connecting one port to the internet and then connecting your computer to the LAN port. Your computer will receive an IP address from the router's DHCP server, and the router will provide the NAT services so that you can access the internet. Because we only have one computer connected directly to the router, this network by design is isolated, which is basically what VirtualBox does when using the NAP mode. This network mode is useful if you want to quickly provide your VM with internet access and don't need to access any services running on the VM from outside networks. Okay, so moving on to the next network mode, let's look at NAT networks. This mode is similar to the NAT mode that we discussed on the previous slide. It uses a virtual NAT device to route traffic between the inside and the outside networks using the IP address 10.0.2.1 and a separate DHCP server to provide the VMs with IP addresses running on 10.0.2.3. One big difference with the NAT network mode is that a virtual switch has been included that all the VMs are connected to. If we look at the table below, by including this virtual switch, the VMs can now communicate with each other as well as the external network devices on your LAN and the internet. The same port forwarding requirements need to be set up if you need to allow a device on the external physical network to access a VM service on the inside virtual network. So to show you what this looks like in terms of a physical network, this is the same as how your home or small office network is set up. 
Generally, the router is set up with NAT and it connects the devices to the internet. And each of your devices will then connect to a physical switch built into the router or via a Wi-Fi connection. All of the devices being on the same network subnet will now be able to communicate with one another, which is essentially what the NAT network mode is doing. This network mode is useful when you have multiple VMs that you need to communicate with each other within their own virtual network and still have access to the internet. The next network mode is the internal network. If you've seen my cybersecurity virtual lab building series, you'll know that I use the internal network and NAT modes often to simulate and model OpenSense firewall connectivity in those labs. If you haven't seen my cybersecurity series yet, I've put a link in the description, go check it out. The internal network mode is probably the easiest mode to understand. Basically, VirtualBox sets up a virtual switch and gives it the name Intnet. Every VM that you wish to connect to the internet switch, you simply select the internal network mode and connect it to that network. If you need multiple virtual switches, simply give it another name like internet 2, 3 or 4, etc. and connect your VMs accordingly. Taking a look at the table below, only VMs connected to the internal network will be able to communicate with each other. This is a totally isolated network. So to show you what this looks like in terms of a physical network, it's basically the same as if you had a physical desktop switch and you plugged each of your physical devices into it. Each physical device will be able to communicate with one another. And because we don't have a router in this case, we won't be able to access the other external networks or the internet. This network mode is useful when you need to model or simulate real network operations like I've covered extensively in my OpenSense firewall uh, building videos and how we can use it to connect our VMs to the LAN interface on the OpenSense firewall. The final network mode that I want to show you is the bridged adapter mode. This mode is used when you want to connect a VM directly to your physical network without using NAT. VirtualBox does this by creating a bridged network using the host's physical network adapter, and then it bridges it directly to the VM's virtual adapter using a specialized driver built into VirtualBox. In bridged adapter mode, your VM will receive an IP address from your physical network's DHCP server and have full connectivity to all devices on the same physical network segment like any of your other physical devices connected to that same network segment essentially. If we take a look at the physical network comparison diagram, this is effectively like plugging the VM directly into your network switch on your physical network. This network mode is useful if you need to access your VM or a service running on that VM directly from your physical network. I don't really use this mode in any of the previous labs I've created. However, I thought it would make sense to show this to you in case you'd like to host any of your lab servers directly on your physical network as an alternative to keeping your VMs isolated uh, to the internal virtual networks. There are a few other network modes. However, I've decided to exclude these from this video and focused on the most used modes that you'll see in my labs. So to tie the concepts that we've just learned together, I've created this virtual network using both internal networks and NAT mode networks. Let's start in the middle of the diagram with VM1, which is our OpenSense firewall. Because a firewall needs to be placed between two network segments, I've configured the LAN interface to be attached to the internal network called internet to the left. The WAN interface of the OpenSense firewall has been configured in NAT mode to simulate an internet connection and receive an IP address from the virtual NAT DHCP device like we covered in the NAT mode section. To the left of the diagram, we have VMs 2, 3 and 4 connected to the internal network. So all of these VMs in this configuration can communicate amongst themselves because they share the common virtual switch like we covered in the internal network mode section. All the VMs in the internal network will also have access to the internet via the OpenSense firewall because they're using the LAN interface of the firewall as their default gateway 
to route out to the NAT network that will provide them with the internet connectivity. Alternatively, let's say that you didn't want to set up op an OpenSense firewall, but you still wanted to provide VMs 2, 3, and 4 with internet connectivity. You could use the NAT network mode instead, so that all the VMs can still communicate with each other and the internet. Another alternative to using the NAT mode on the OpenSense WAN interface is to use the bridge adapter mode to provide internet connectivity to the interface. As you can see, there are many combinations that one can use to achieve network connectivity in your virtual environment. That's all that I have to show you today. I hope that you now have a better understanding of how the most used network modes in VirtualBox work. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and keep the algorithm happy. Your support is always appreciated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers for now.